Okay. So, on your evolution test, there, there were kind of like three themes on your evolution test. There was like, where does genetic variation come from? There was another one about just um, microevolution, which is how do populations change? And then there was macroevolution stuff that dealt with speciation. Where do new species come from? And people got these all like mixed up in their mind. So let's first go with microevolution, how like populations change. So that's what you guys learned first. So the Hardy Weinberg theory says that like there's a couple things that need to happen for populations not to change. So when we do Hardy Weinberg equilibrium, we're assuming that allele frequencies are constant. So most of the time there is some type of evolution going on, and we're going to know that the population is changing because we'll see allele frequencies change. Or we'll see phenotypic, genetic phenotypic frequencies change too. So there's like five fingers of evolution, five different ways that populations can change. What can cause allele frequencies to change? Gene flow. Yep. Mutation. Genetic drift. Natural selection. Yeah. Okay. So these are five different ways, and they all change allele frequencies in a population. So if you have someone new, come into a population, they bring in brand new alleles and they not shift the percentages of alleles in a population. Or if someone leaves the population, they leave with their alleles and that might shift the percentages. Mutation gives you a brand new allele, so that's going to change the allele frequency. Do you guys remember what genetic drift is? It, and it happens in small populations. Random changes in small populations. There's natural selection, there's sexual selection. Natural selection is important because it's the only one that is adaptive. adaptive. Meaning that it's the only one that helps the population survive in the environment that it's in. It's the only one that we know for sure is going to always be a good thing for that population is natural selection. The other ones could be good, could be bad. Natural selection always helps the population over time. It might not help the individual, but the population will be stronger. So looking at natural selection, we have some things that have to happen first before natural selection can occur. So, first we need, the trait needs to be inherited, or it needs to be a genetic trait. It, not yet. It's coming though. If it's a trait that's not inherited, natural selection can't work on an acquired or an a trait that you get from your environment. So like, I lose a leg. If I had another baby, I wouldn't have a one-legged baby. Like, or if I work out a lot and I get really big muscles, my little baby's not going to be born with really big muscles. Okay. <laughs> um, secondly, 
in the population, there needs to be genetic variation in the population to begin with. And that has to be there first. Now then, now what happens? Now we have an environmental pressure. That means that there's some environmental condition, it could be anything, and some in the populations have a trait that helps them survive in that environment better than others. So now we have um, we have some that have an adaptive trait. If it's adaptive in some of the individuals, that means it aids in two things. Survival, but more importantly, reproduction. So you need to talk about how it aids in survival and reproduction. Because it's the differential reproductive success. It is the individuals with the adaptive trait who reproduce more often than the ones without it. That's what caused the allele frequencies to change in the next generation. What people forget though, this is their first. You don't get genetic variation in the population because of natural selection. It was there to begin with. So we need to know where this genetic variation can come from. So we're going to put this into sexual species, uh, prokaryotes, and asexual eukaryotes. So where does genetic variation come from? That's one, one way we can get new new alleles or new genes in a population. And it should go in what, which of my categories? Yeah, so crossing over because it happens in gamete formation in prophase one of meiosis. Mutations for all. And that is called transduction. Allo change to host DNA. And all of these things can have a virus infect them, so that works for all of them. I'm sorry? Random mating on the sexual side. For which ones? Mm. Asexual, I agree with, but not the eukaryotes. Bacteria. The conjugation. Do you guys remember what conjugation is? Sharing of plasmids across that little pili bridge. So. <laughs> Here's a little like pili, they're holding hands, and then you have one big long bacterial chromosome, and this one has plasmids, which are small little circular DNA, and it can travel from one to the next. So conjugation, transformation. 
How is transformation different than conjugation? So this is conjugation. I'm only going to have one bacterial cell here for transformation. Where does the back, where does the new DNA come from? Environment. So it can come from the outside. It could be a plasmid from outside, or it could just be like some lone DNA from the outside. It's a lot. Um, random fertilization. That's why you don't look exactly like your brothers and sisters, even if you have the same parents. Because what gamete fertilizes the other one is random. This genetic variation can happen in an individual. So genetic variation is an individual thing, right? Crossing over is here. What's the other thing that happens in gamete formation? It also happens in, in prophase one. Independent assortment. Independent assortment is when you make the tetrads in prophase one and they line up in the middle. And there's your tetrad, blues for a paternal, pink for maternal. My next chromosome, chromosome 2, doesn't have to necessarily have all the paternal on one side and maternal on the other. They align independently. So this is just showing that each tetrad lines up independently along the metaphase plate. So when they split, you get a mix of chromosomes from mom and dad when you make gametes. Crossing over is when we have synapsis between these internal non-sister chromatids and they switch genetic information. We're done now. That's it. So genetic variation can happen in an individual. Evolution happens to a population. Now we're getting a brand new species. So there's two things that have to happen to get a brand new species. Reproductive isolation and genetic change, yeah, or genetic divergence. If we have to have reproductive isolation first, because genes in a population change all the time. That just means the whole population changes. I need to reproductively isolate one part of the population from the other so that when genes change, they change differently for the different subgroups. But the changes happen because of this. So this hap change happens to like the individual, this genetic variation, but then this is how the population changes.